<laughs> Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul. Very happy to be connecting with you today on a Monday. We just got through a busy weekend. It is the 5th of February, 2018. And today, for those flipping through, I will be talking with you about the spiritual approach to maintaining calmness in crisis conditions. This should touch a few souls, should connect to a few people uh, in a very deep way. That's my intention. <clears throat> this morning, when I received the guidance to offer teaching on this, uh, <laughs> I, I recognized why, uh, because there is a lot of things going on in this world that can create crisis, but I never actually thought about teaching anything on this. And a lot of this will be uh, through guidance, because although I have done a flow to get a feel for what, uh, what information is to be shared, I am still also having a deeper understanding of why I was asked to talk about this. So we'll both be in the learning process today as to how to prepare spiritually to maintain balance, maintain calmness in crisis. So thank you so much for joining today and thank you also for hitting the share button, letting other people know about today's live stream. I hope your weekend was valuable, beneficial to your life and brought you higher towards light. If you are not spending any of your time assisting others to be happier or healthier, then, then most likely you'll be one of those that says it was this hard, it was that hard, you know, it was a painful weekend. It is always a choice, you know. Um, we will always be surrounded by things that can bring us pain. It depends on how much allowance we want to give it. Uh, whereas if we go outside of ourselves, help others to be happier and healthier in any way, shape or form. I don't mean literally getting outside. Uh, you can do that by picking up the phone. You can do that by meditating and sending love. You can do that without ever moving your toe. Um, but if you spend any time assisting others in that way, then it will absolutely help. So I hope you all had a great weekend on that note. We just finished a full week here with Master Cecilia. It was very powerful. And uh, get ready for Master Ruru Lin uh, this month, near the end of this month. And she's a very powerful master who helped co-write uh, Tao Science with Master Shah. And so she'll be teaching a course on <coughs> Tao Science and Finances. So the associations with the Tao and the science of it and its association with finances. So that'll be a very, very powerful class, I'm sure. Very interesting, to say the least. So I hope you can make that one. So I thank you all for coming and joining, and thank you again for hitting the share button. So we'll go into the wisdom and teachings in just a little while. Let's check in and see who's joined us here so far today. <coughs> Welcome, Omar. Thank you for joining. Aloha, Catherine. And aloha, Joan Margaret. Welcome also, Sharon Dodd. Aloha, Trinity. Welcome, Dean, and Aloha, Crane. Aloha, Kristen Rojas, and Jennifer Maria. Larissa, Aloha, welcome. Thank you for coming. Aloha, Dawn, and M.A. Drade. Welcome, Lutzia. Welcome also, Fabian. And Aloha, and welcome to Larissa. Uh, and Aspasia. Welcome, Angie Taylor. And welcome also to Rohan. Welcome Jessica Christine and uh, Janice Crosby Carter. Welcome Missy Dodd and welcome also to Jim and Shakira. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Everybody has a different time zone. <coughs> there are some students that come in one and two in the morning from Europe, night owls. So in Hawaii right now where I'm at, we're having a pretty rainy season. They had flash flood warnings over in Kauai yesterday. <laughs> And all last night it rained here, <clears throat> which is good, even though it's uh, an island in the middle of the ocean, we still need our rain. Just not too much of it, right? And welcome also to Pat. So let us go ahead and connect. 
But while we're waiting for more people to join, we'll place our hands in soul light, soul service hand position. We'll drop our left hand in front of our heart center, right hand remain pointing towards heaven. And for those new just tuning in, this is a mantra that we'll be chanting. It's called Love, Peace, and Harmony. And it is an unconditional universal servant to humanity. This soul song has been translated into 42 languages. So you can learn more about it and, and download your language by going to lovepeaceharmony.org. And this is also a healing blessing, so you can make requests silently to heaven. <clears throat> so let us chant together on now for this service. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, the Soar Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony for your service. <clears throat> so welcome also to uh, Pat, welcome Nola, welcome An Angela Diacoma, Aloha Katie Nada, <clears throat> and welcome Barbara Moore, welcome also Fabian, if I missed your name, forgive me, thank you for sharing. This subject is very, very needed. The spiritual perspective on how to maintain emotional balance in a crisis is something that is not well understood, certainly not often applied by the vast majority of us and probably mostly because we don't have a foundation or a root to work with. We tend to um, be in a reactionary state unless we are very aware. Take for example a parent. A parent can react emotionally, mentally, very chaotic, very um, imbalanced when they hear some news about a child, for example. Uh, maybe they fell off their bike, or maybe they were in a car accident, or something like that. <clears throat> now, it's certainly understandable, and I'm not in any way, shape, or form judging a, a response or a reaction. But from the spiritual perspective, and solely from the spiritual perspective, a crisis does not have to mean uh, untamed emotional mental reaction. Because from the spiritual perspective, <clears throat> everything has a cause and effect. Everything is connected. <clears throat> and we, as the individual that can choose to react or not react, need to be responsible for our creation and our collective creation. Very often in crisis, the person that people look up to 
is the one that is most in control, the one that is most calm, the one whose heart is most open, and the one who is able to ascertain the overall conditions of the crisis and offer sage and well thought out guidance. So why can't everybody do that? Well, the answer is because we're not trained to. We are trained through our upbringing to react. We are trained through our upbringing to mimic, mimic mother or father's reactions. You know, I, I grew up in a violent home where uh, at, at the age of eight or so, my uh, father moved out and it wasn't violent until after that when a stepfather moved in and was alcoholic. And so I witnessed rage for the first time, a violent reaction to very nominal things, things that would normally at the very most cause a, slam ha a hand slap would cause something quite a bit more violent than that. <clears throat> so when we as children witness um, how our parents and our peers react, we adopt that and we bring that similar, maybe not the same, but a similar mental emotional response to a crisis. So to understand, spiritually speaking, how one should or could be in a crisis requires us to uh, set aside patterns of response and practice. You literally have to put forth some practice in responding in a more um, aware spiritual manner. Now I'm going to do a flow uh, shortly here. I'll wait a few more minutes, see if any more people join. And I'll ask for some guidance. I did a flow earlier and the wisdom that was coming through was, was very valuable. So I will reconnect to that and share some of Heaven's information with you on this subject matter. Let's talk about different kinds of crisis. There is personal crisis where you might hear something like you have an incurable disease uh, or somebody might say you have cancer. Uh, and so immediately fear and reaction kicks in and in almost every case that's because of what we've been taught that, that um, you know, there's, it's very difficult to cure cancer, blah, blah, blah. If you do the research on it, chemotherapy, all that's about a 4% success rate, blah, blah, blah. When in fact, all the natural things that are out there have a much higher success rate, but we're not told about that. So there's a, a fear built in structure that if someone's told that, a personal crisis. So we have, that's one kind of crisis. Then there's family kinds of crisis. You know, my brother this, my sister that, my child this, my parent that. Um, bullies at school. Um, Life-based crises, you know, car accidents, blah, blah. So then you have that kind of crisis. Then you have the bigger kinds of crisis, like uh, financial crisis, okay? Losing a job, um, being uh, laid off or fired has a very different crisis feel to it. Laid off, usually you have some, some warning, you have time to react, so to speak. Being fired uh, or cut is, is very different. So that creates a crisis response. The stock market, okay, the stock market, a lot of people uh, have been bathing in the sunshine of a very uh, brisk stock market, completely oblivious to um, the possibility that on any given moment, those that control the money could pull the plug. They make money when they pull the plug because you can actually bet against the stock market. So the people that, that raise it can also lower it in the, in the drop of a of a, of a pen. Um, and if that were to happen, what kind of, of, of reaction and trauma would that bring? That's a very different kind of crisis. Uh, a different perspective on that might be um, if the, somebody pulls the plug on the internet, which is possible, believe it or not. Also, those things can happen on a natural occurrence. If there's a solar flare, okay, um, it can literally knock out all 
the electronics on half of the uh, half of the planet, the half that's facing the, the sun. You may or may not know that. Um, if there's a nuclear burst in the air, that has the same effect as the sun burst. It can knock out the electronics on the planet. And so this could create a different kind of crisis, not only a financial crisis, but a crisis of uh, no food, no water. There could be a volcanic eruption in which the soot goes into the air, such a high amount of, of blast of a singular, single volcano that it could literally uh, knock out the sun for a few years. This has already happened in the past. It's not something I'm making up. And so these are different kinds of crises. So why do I bring these up and why do I bring them up now? Why in the last year and a half have I not talked about any of this? And why did heaven mention that to me to cover it today? Because we are, as a human race, stepping towards quite a few different forms of higher level crisis. I pray every day that we as a human race continue to be more loving and honoring and respectful to each other more compassionate and forgiving to each other instead of greed and corruption, which tends to rule the planet right now. And if we continue down that path of love, peace, and harmony at a very brisk rate, then that energetic frequency will override the negativity. But in the process, even today as I speak, there are quite a few um, things happening from those serving the plan of the light side, so to speak, to overturn and overrule the, those that have been controlling humanity for quite a while. And to think that they're just going to go, ah, oh, you know, that's, that's okay, here, just put the handcuffs on me and take me away. No. <laughs> They've been doing this for centuries. They're not going to go away without kicking and screaming. And that kicking and screaming could include conditions in which Humanity has crisis. And so that's why I haven't asked me to have this conversation today. What was very uncomfortable one actually, not one that's easy to address, not one easy to talk about. It's one that I've been very well aware of for at least 10 years and a very high level of awareness. But not one that I've ever uh, spoken about in this kind of a forum because this kind of a forum is specific to um, spiritual growth and so to take um, this subject matter of crisis at a worldwide level at an individual family level at a no food no water level at a level in where we could experience this in our life from world calamities from man-made calamities uh, or natural calamities it's a very real thing right now is sad but it's true and ignorance doesn't change that so if it's not addressed then i'm also in a place of disservice to you and humanity with the knowledge that i have so i'm addressing this as best i can maybe all of you are completely aware of the same things at your own levels i i, I doubt that you have the same awareness that um, maybe the top three percent of humanity has of what's really going on um, in terms of the the war at the ground dark and light at on the ground level there's a lot of stuff going on that will will come to the light in the course of the next year you'll start to see quite a bit more but in this process you and i could be affected our families could be affected and so we have to have the spiritual intelligence to address it we have to have um we have to be the ones that are wise enough to not get caught up in a reaction, not get caught up uh, like everyone else that is unaware could be caught up. Because we need to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of our families, so that we can be available to assist as many others around us that need the love and light that we carry. We cannot carry and bring forth that love and light to serve others if we are in reaction mode. We can't. We need to be in a state of aware control mode if we're going to be able to save as many lives as possible in a crisis condition.
Now, when I say save as many lives as possible, it could be as simple as water. Uh, it could be as simple as food. It could be as simple as <coughs> uh, maintaining, literally maintaining peacefulness. You have the tools to help accomplish that. But in a crisis, in a reactionary state, you might not realize that. So I'm going to pause now and I'm going to do a flow. I'm going to ask for some wisdom from heaven on this subject matter and we'll see what is said. And then we'll move forward from there. So welcome uh, Paula Hyatt. Welcome Patrick Aberdeen. Welcome Chai. Aloha Susan and Joanna Tremaine. Welcome. Welcome also Becky Lafave, Kristen Strachan. Welcome Lisa Zarniak. Welcome Heather Houston and Anjali Flauta. Welcome Jota. <coughs> Welcome to uh, Heather McNee. Okay. <coughs> so welcome everybody. If I missed you, forgive me. So close your eyes and hear this message. Dear Heaven, please share the message that is of the greatest value for everyone to hear regarding this subject matter. <coughs> How? Everyone and everything has a soul. Your beloved Mother Earth has a soul. Your oceans have a soul. All humanity, of course. Each soul has power. What is not understood nearly enough is the extraordinary power of those who are attuned to the source. For if it was only 5% that were 100% attuned of all the souls of all creation, then that 5% could cause the other 95% to move forward on their soul journey. And in reverse, if that 5% was of the unpleasant frequencies, it takes but a few very dedicated to the darkness frequencies to create Trying to get the, the exact word. Chaos. This word represents a lack of alignment, a lack of remembering, and a lack of power. When Those that serve the self to such a degree that they are able to manipulate and control others. They are very dedicated to their effort and it keeps those that are unaware in a place of disassociation, discontent, a lack of focus, desire, a lack of motivation, interest, and empowerment. Those in this 
chaotic, unaware, follow the leader role are the ones that can hurt everybody else because of their lack of awareness. In a crisis, they could respond with selfishness, taking for themselves, protecting for themselves, not sharing, not caring, not understanding the nature of their soul. This is the propagation of that which has been orchestrated over time. The light side, if you will, is what you are all from. But in this pivotal time in humanity, there is a great and distinct possibility of crisis. Crisis of food, water, energy, power, finances, health. Individually and collectively, the only solution is togetherness, oneness, selflessness. The title, How to Remain in Balance, spiritually speaking, in a crisis, is answered by this simple response. The one who fails to react negatively but chooses instead to be available to assist and bring together all those who suffer in oneness, collectiveness, supportiveness, are the ones that will survive any crisis. For it is the gathering of that 5% in collective alignment that creates the same tidal shift. Remember this, for there could be a time in your future when you may be the one that brings about the gathering of souls to serve and collect up amongst each other to support each other. Know that there will be some who are lost, some who are stuck in taking for themselves, caring for themselves, taking from the collective for themselves. We must not hate but love those who are lost. The higher and deeper spiritual response to any crisis is one of open-mindedness, one of observation and collection of information. A reaction inherently states that one is not prepared with information. A reaction inherently states, I am defaulting to an immediate mode, which may or may not be the best response. The spiritual aspirant pauses, recognizes that nothing is accidental, recognizes that the control of their mental emotional state will serve the most and save the most lives.
And that person is the leader. This subject matter has been brought to you on this day, not by accident. So please pay attention to the wisdom. Oneness will always succeed over any crisis. This is the soul of the answer to this question. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Welcome, Jones Brown. Thank you for those who just joined. You just caught me offering a uh, a uh, sharing of some heaven's wisdom to assist us. Welcome, Lama Rangbar. Aloha. Welcome, uh, also Deborah Anderson. <coughs> and welcome also to Monica. Welcome, Alicia. Welcome, Charlie, and Sofia Onofrio. So this is a difficult subject matter for me because it's not something that's necessarily written in, in any of the books, but it's something as indicated I cannot necessarily deny or be unaware of. There is, and I will share something with you that's borderline, borderline inappropriate to share in this forum. But I share it because there's a value in understanding it. Some of you may be aware of it, some of you may not. All of you are here because you're a light worker on some level. Some of you are aware of it, some of you are semi-aware of it, some of you are very aware of it, some of you are going, really? But you wouldn't be searching and coming back here on a consistent basis if you weren't expanding your spiritual awareness. There has been a great deal of effort at a heavenly level in the past 100 years to bring huge amount of light workers to humanity. And it, we know, everybody who's done any degree of homework, you know, 2012, shifting of the tides, the, the, you know, the, all of these different things that no one quite has their finger on but everybody knows about. On the physical ground level, right now, as we speak, there is a, um, a geopolitical war going on where those that have been in control of the financial systems and of governments are being battled around the planet. There has been a great deal this, this may, may or may not be heard well. I have to share a little bit. There is a great deal of things that are hidden from humanity by those who wish to take a lot of this from us and keep us controlled. This occurs through television. It occurs through many different modalities, even Wi-Fi. Um, these are all things that are not supportive to our spiritual structure. These are all things that keep us in a place of emotional despair, depression, and um, create, keep, keep us in a crisis in many cases. We are, as a spiritual being, light. That's where we come from. That's what we are. We just happen to be in a physical body. And it is a natural aspect of our growth as a spiritual being to awaken more and more through every day. And that has been suppressed. There's no candy coating that statement. It has been suppressed for a long time, centuries, more than centuries. And the suppression is being challenged right now at the physical level on our planet. We know we're challenging at the spiritual level. We're all doing our part, okay? 
but I'm talking about it at the physical level. The suppression uh, occurs through the mainstream media, uh, the, the, those with the financial control at the top um, control the mainstream media, therefore they control what we are told. I suspect that at least 50% of you are very aware of this, the other 50% may be like, oh really, that's interesting. Um, so the narrative is controlled, meaning we are kept in the dark, get it, we're kept in the dark. Uh, we are not being allowed to evolve spiritually, purposefully. Because if we were truly evolved spiritually, we would already be in a very peaceful place on this planet. Many of the great uh, teachings out there talk about our future being filled with love and peace and harmony. L l almost, almost all of them speak of that, our future creating that. And so the crisis that I speak of uh, I pray every day that nothing happens that will keep moving forward in love and light and it'll be a pain-free experience between here and there. But there is possibility of crisis. There is possibility of the uh, those that have been controlling to lash back because they have control measures in place. They have control measures through um, electronics and mainstream media and other things. So, in order to be prepared spiritually, we need to remain in the light. We need to consciously continue with our practices. We need to consciously chant love, peace, and harmony to serve as many souls as possible. We need to consciously, purposefully put in other people's hands things that support light-based uh, growth light-based spirituality if it's you know I of course suggest master Shah material because all of its light-based wisdom it's things that uplift our soul it doesn't have to be that it can be anything that supports light-based wisdom um, but the more of that we do then we are supporting everyone's spiritual growth and not falling into the trap of the control mechanisms that have squashed and pushed down our spiritual growth it's a very difficult subject matter to approach given the venue of, of, of what I've uh, been supporting this time <clears throat> so I'm not going to use those words that I see flashing on the screen people I'm not even going to repeat them you know there's other names that they have for this okay it's representative of, of the same thing I'm talking about do your own homework okay but the key here is how are we to respond? How are we to be with this awareness if a crisis occurs? Here in Hawaii, we had missile threats not too long ago. That's an example of a real world um, on the ground battle. To think for a moment that somebody pushed the wrong button, then, you know, think twice, guys. It takes five step process and a double turn key to, to turn on that warning. And it has to happen about five seconds after an actual missile launch. There is no such thing as a button that the guy sat on because he wasn't paying attention. And it doesn't happen not once but twice. These are not accidents. These are crises trying to happen because of what's happening on the planet today. So the more we focus on light and light-based service, the more we chant love, peace, and harmony, the more we uh, not react, but be a part of the solution, the easier we'll be able to make it through anything that might come at us moving forward. It does not matter if the crisis is at the family level, at the personal level, or at the uh, larger level, you know, in our city, in our town, in our country. The answer is still the same. The spiritual person on the spiritual path looks at everything as a cause and effect, and they see that they can make a difference by being the person that watches it instead of reacts to it. Okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to chant love, peace, and harmony. 
we're going to chant to serve humanity because that is the best thing that we can do to serve them at the highest level I give you a short teaching why everything everything carries a frequency the highest frequency is our creator the lowest frequency is the opposite of that yin and yang circle the deepest layers of the of the uh, darkness if you will everything carries a frequency love peace harmony carries a frequency not just words not just words I have chanted and people uh, have received healings from this so it's the re it's in 42 languages for a reason because when we get that 5% that came through the flow when we get that 5% operating at a 100% power everything flops to the light side it does not take a lot it takes a concentration and this song carries extraordinary frequency not earth frequency extraordinary way way above earth frequency and accordingly it can transform things much faster everyone and everything has a soul so we invite all the souls of humanity and all universes to chant with us every time you chant you don't just sit at home and chant by yourself you ask all souls and all universes to chant with you and we chant together to offer the service if you're in a crisis and there's no food limited food limited water and there's fighting amongst people they're struggling there's kicking shoving moving people aside because there's selfishness occurring what is the solution literally start singing love peace and harmony I'm not kidding if you start singing love peace and harmony other people will start singing it with you and you will create literally a song circle and it will change the frequency there will be no more shoving there will be no more pushing there will be a naturalization of the room energies it is a solution that is in your hand in your head on the tip of your tongue but we don't understand how to use it in the form of a crisis it will bring you food and water you could literally be in a place where these things are not available but because you are chanting to serve it will it will offset people's hunger it will bring water into their mouth in the form of saliva it will bring frequencies and the best set of conditions to where food and water finds you this is how powerful one mantra can be because of its focused oneness and its high frequency I hope this little explanation helps you understand how relevant and important it is because when other people around you are in reaction mode and you have this one tool where you can make that kind of a difference that is priceless and then you also teach them because they can then teach others through the same thing somebody is hurt their leg is bandaged they're maybe cut wounded the other person working on them starts singing love peace and harmony their fear their anxiety comes down almost instantly what kind of service is that it is a spiritual being acting spiritually not in a reactionary mode when you bring fear to other people that are in fear you're certainly not helping the condition so this teaching is how to bring your spirituality to a crisis condition and the tool is the song of love peace and harmony and learning to uh, not react but to be present to what is ever is happening in the highest and best way possible <clears throat> so let us chant to serve <clears throat> place our hands in soul light soul service hand position we'll do a quick forgiveness practice and a uh, connection practice so dear all souls in all universes all souls of humanity we love you we honor you we appreciate you we individually and collectively ask forgiveness <clears throat> if I or our ancestors have brought any form of harm or suffering that has created negativity, discord, war, strife, uh, crisis. <clears throat> we sincerely, sincerely apologize. We are dedicated to serve humanity, to bring health and happiness. We sincerely ask forgiveness will not make the same mistakes again. 
We invite all souls in humanity to please chant with us. We invite all souls in all universes to ch please chant with us, to serve unconditionally <coughs> at this time. So let's chant to serve. If some of you have your third eye open, spiritual third eye, you can uh, report what you see. You might be very surprised at the benefit. I tell you, we've done this many times at the center, just 10, 20, 30 of us chanting, and the images, the, the information is astounding because of the frequency. Okay? So let's chant to serve. Uh, for those that do not know the words, Kristen has just posted it in her chat box. You can actually scroll to Kristen Rojas chat box and see the words. <clears throat> Let us chant. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Visualize. Mother Earth and humanity, light, see, humanity and Mother Earth, lighting up. Ah, wo ai wo xin her ling, wo ai tran ran lei, ang ling rong her mu shir shang, shang ai ping ang ne xie, Xiong ai ping on her xie. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Lula, lula, li. With all your heart, with all your love. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Wo ai wo xin er ling. Wo ai tran ran lei. Wo ling rong er mu shir shong. Shong ai ping on a xie. Xiong ai ping on a xie. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. <coughs> love, peace, and harmony. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Wo ai wo xin er ling, wo ai tran ran lei, ran ling rong er mu shir shang, shuang ai ping an he xie, shuang ai ping an he xie. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Continue. 
when you chant, sir from your heart, know that billions of souls are chanting with you. Hear the chorus in your ear. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Shang I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. <clears throat> love, peace, and harmony. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Woi, wo shin, erling. Woi, tran, ran, lay. Wang, ling, rung, er, mu, shur, shong. Shong, ai, ping. <coughs> I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Joy hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. And Deborah says she pictures all humanity holding hands. Beautiful. <clears throat> Picture the love going to the oceans, blessing and bringing healing to the coral reefs, the whales and the dolphins. All of the children of humanity, they are getting food and nourishment. People are coming to them. All the zones where water is, 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 is very, very limited. Water is coming. Rain is coming. All the places where there is imbalance, balance comes. Continue to serve. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula. Woi, woshin, erling. Woi, tran, ran, lay. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls 
together love peace and harmony love peace and harmony <clears throat> now swallow the saliva in your mouth down to your lower abdomen this feeds and nourishes you actually keeps you from getting hungry very simple technique to remember that if you find yourself loved ones or other people around you chant silently this song and you will build saliva in your mouth swallow it down to your lower abdomen it fills your up not just filling up your lower abdomen it's a form of heaven's nectar and earth's nectar filling you up okay it's a sacred secret <clears throat> how 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 thank you thank you thank you wow very hot so Monica says she felt warm all over tenseness has been gone her stomach pain which was a 10 is now gone she saw a garden with beautiful light a paradise and people holding hands Deborah saw uh, all humanity holding hands we are all one Kathy Arnold saw golden lights throughout the cosmic community mother earth and more uh, welcome Lindy Lowe welcome uh, Diana I hope you've been watching this whole time and I'm just seeing your name pop up because we just finished chanting to serve humanity so to uh, and you're welcome to share any images or third eye images that you saw Suzanne Harvey thank you Suzanne for sharing that you felt expanded so this song lovepeaceharmony.org you can download it lovepeaceharmony.org the copyright has been removed it is hoped that you give this song to as many souls as possible email it send them YouTube videos of it get it in people's hands make CDs pass out hundreds of them it's up to you um, it's in 42 languages teach it to those you know in a different foreign nation the more people that sing it the more collection of a very high frequency okay you know Monica just indicated that her pain went from a 10 to a zero we we just sang a song right no we sang a source soul song it carries extraordinary frequency if you want to know if a pear is sweet taste it sing it to offer a blessing to your children see what happens sing it to offer a blessing to yourself you'll be very surprised it is the tool that is available to us in a crisis you must remember if you have a personal crisis family crisis financial crisis you have a crisis in your community or a crisis on uh, on your country when people are running around in reaction mode you move into spiritual warrior mode you move into awakened mode you need to realize that somebody has to be calm cool and aware to help those that are in reaction mode to come back to balance and this song is literally the fastest way to accomplish it you only need to try it once before you'll be 100 percent convinced um, it has that kind of power and it is one of the best ways to bring calm to a very difficult condition and is one of the best ways to uh, if there is a lack of what is needed to sustain human life or food water promise you if everybody is chanting that they will not be as hungry it will offset their hunger and their thirst why because we literally don't need food and water literally there are hundreds thousands literally thousands of human beings on the planet today just like you and me not special but they have learned how to eat heaven's nectar what do you think angels eat what do you think saints eat you think they sit up there and eat food they eat heaven's mana they eat mother earth's nectar and so there are many many humans that don't eat food and water we think we need it because we are taught that we need it we are evolving to where we don't need it and so in the process from here to there which could take another million years uh, but in that process if we recognize that something like the source soul song of love peace and harmony which brings that same frequency that same nectar then we know that we can use that to offset very unpleasant conditions if needed so these are some very real examples of how to be spiritually in crisis conditions 
And so, uh, Patrick Aberdeen, little goosebumps and hair-raising experience for me. He saw, uh, saw nothing, sorry, but felt very relaxed, wonderful. Very good sharing. Uh, Jones, I felt her heart chakra completely open. Beautiful. That's the power of this mantra. Monica, she noticed she doesn't play the song or chant it on a daily basis. She gets, t if she doesn't play it on a daily basis, she gets tense. Good awareness, Monica. Uh, Kathy says she believes it saved her life, this music. And then uh, Joan says her cat walked over to her when they were chanting and sat on her chest and purred and picked up the, on the vibration. Yeah, animals, they know instantly. Uh, feeling more connected, says Angie Taylor. Love and light to all. So thank you, Divine Down Source, for giving me the opportunity to bring this wisdom to all you. Uh, and I was happy to see that the number of people that we came in with stayed during this entire time. So that meant that you're all aware spiritual warriors and here to make a difference for humanity thank you for your unconditional service thank you for your awareness thank you for all you do please like please share if you're new and you enjoyed this um, hit the subscribe button you'll know when i go live again so i will say thank you thank you thank you love you love you love you and to all the beings of light respectfully return i will be back tomorrow same time same place love you guys bye bye